I can't see the wind at all. Can you? We don't see the wind. But we know the wind is there because we see everything that the wind touches. And in the same, you can see everything that God touches. No matter what the devil does to me or what his plan is, I know that God is God. And I know that I know that I know that he has a plan and I trust that. I will never turn my back on God. We make the decision to spend eternity in hell. We send ourselves to hell when we choose to follow the footsteps and the lies of the enemy and we shut God out and we reject Jesus Christ. But once it's done, it's too late. There will never be going back and doing it over again. Hi, it's Lindley Oz, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Coffee Time with Lynn. Here's my cup of coffee. I don't have a message on the cup today. I was thinking about something and I thought it was kind of an interesting thing to discuss and think about and get your guys' thoughts on. Before I do that, I do want to say something before I forget, because I'm going to forget if I don't say it right now. So y'all know that in the videos toward the end, I ask people who feel moved to give to this ministry because that's what I do full time. This here, it's very time consuming. So I ask people to help support me and I don't have sponsors and I don't really make anything off YouTube because most of my videos are demonetized. The ones that aren't, they pay me at a way lesser rate to where I make hardly anything. So I depend on your donations to this ministry, or your gifts, I should say. I'm an LLC. Um, I depend on your gifts to this ministry in order to make these videos. Anyways, there's a reason why I'm saying all that right now. Some people have been canceling their checks, and when people cancel the checks, it charges me a huge fee in my checking account. One of the recent ones, the fee was way more than the amount of the check. So. What I wanted to say is I only make it to the post office about once a week. I was out of town last week for a few days to get furniture. So the post office is not in the town I live in. So it's about a 20 or 30 minute drive depending on traffic. So I only make it to the post office about once a week. And then I don't make it to the bank until the next day. So if you're worried that I didn't get your check, you can write to me at lynnleaz at freedomnationnews.com and ask me and I'll let you know. Or if for some reason you had something happen financially and you've changed your mind, you can write to me and tell me, you know, put in the subject line, please don't deposit the check. So write me right away and ask me not to deposit the check and I will tear it up and send you a photo of the torn check or mail it back so that you know, okay? Because this ministry survives on gifts to the ministry. And so when you do that, you know, we cancel the check, then I end up paying fees with my bank. So if you could be so kind as to write to me if you're worried I didn't get it and I'll answer you and let you know, or, and I understand unforeseen things happen if something happens and you can't afford the check that you sent, just write to me. I will destroy it. I will write void all over it in black marker, tear it up, mail it back to you, or send you a picture of it destroyed, and I'll toss it in the trash can, whatever you want. So I'm going to forget. That's why I wanted to go ahead and say that now. I'm sorry to start my video out with that. But honestly, I would forget. I've meant to say something in the last few videos about that, and I totally forgot. One of the things that was on my mind had to do with miracles and healing. The Bible talks about healing and miracles. We know that Jesus mixed his saliva with mud, or, geez, I'm saying that wrong. We know that, for example, Jesus mixed his saliva with dirt, and he made mud, and he put it on the blind man's eyes, and the man was able to see. We know that he raised Lazarus from the dead. If you hear a weird noise, my knee keeps hitting the drawer that's right here on my counter, and it makes a noise, and there's nothing I can do about it. 
We know that Jesus also had the woman with the issue of blood that touched his uh, talents on his prayer shawl, and she was healed. We know that he healed sick children. We know that there were all sorts of miracles, and the Bible tells us that with faith we could do such miracles. So here's my question to pose to you, because this is a hot topic of controversy that many people discuss, and a lot of people don't really know the answers to why some people get healed and some people don't. So I guess I wanted to pose that question. Why do some people get healed and how come other people don't get healed? I know myself, there's times that I had great faith about something and I prayed in faith, I fasted, I did everything the Bible tells you to do and healing didn't come. I know that there's lots of people I've known who were so close to the Lord and prayed for healing for someone or for themselves, had hands laid on them, just the whole nine yards, everything the Bible tells you to do, and they didn't get healed. So the question is, is healing for everyone and will everyone be healed? Now, I can only share my opinions and thoughts, but I don't know these things for a fact. The only thing I do know for a fact is unborn innocent babies die, unborn babies suffer. I know that children and infants suffer and die with diseases. I know that there are all sorts of people, good and bad, saved and unsaved alike, who pray for healing, who believe with their whole heart, and they don't get healed. Then I have to pose the question, okay, we know that life in this body of flesh that we live someday comes to an end. That's how it is. Because of Adam and Eve and the sin they committed in the garden, we all eventually someday die of something. So if healing was for everyone and everyone was going to be healed, then wouldn't that mean there would be people from hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago who are still alive today? Interesting. Again, these are just some of those weird things I think about sometimes and I pray about and I just kind of wonder about. And so I'm sharing them with you. Maybe the Lord has spoken something to you. Maybe you know the answer. I don't know. Or maybe you would just think about it. Or maybe you do think about this sometimes. I don't know. So we do know positively that because of Adam and Eve and the sin they committed in the garden, that death from something is part of this life on this earth. We know this positively. The Bible tells us that. So why is it then, if that's the case, what does the Bible mean when it says that all people can be healed, everyone can be healed? And does the Bible really say that everyone gets healed? Is that what it means? Like if you study the words and the history and the original context of the Hebrew and the Greek and all of that, is that what the Bible is really telling us? Does the Bible indeed say that everyone will be healed? And when it says everyone will be healed, is it referring to here on this earth? Or is it referring to the new body that we someday get when we take our last breath here and we go to heaven? What does it mean? Again, that's just one of those interesting things. Because there's a lot of people that get really, really depressed about this. They pray and they believe. Maybe they're praying over a sick child. Or I know there was a little child with a brain tumor. Actually, there's been several I've heard about or knew somebody personally. And the small child had a brain tumor. Everybody prayed. There was like hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people praying for these children anointing them with oil, laying hands on them, and all of this, and these children died. So people get really depressed. They lose their faith in the Lord over things like that because they'd always been taught that healing is for everyone. And if healing is for everyone, what did they do wrong? 
that this child didn't get healed. Remember King David put on sackcloth and ashes and repented and prayed for the healing of his little child that him and Bathsheba had and sinned together and that child died. So should we not have faith and should we not believe her healing? Certainly not. I believe we should always have faith and always believe for healing. I think that's very important. It's of the utmost. However, I think that we also need to be aware that God's will ultimately will be done. What if it's not his will? What is his purpose and his plan in sickness and disease that happens on this earth? Yes, sickness and disease and death was not part of his original plan, but when Adam and Eve sinned, it became part of the process of life. So now that that's part of the process of life here on this earth, until we're all renewed someday and changed, however that happens, whether it be by you know the coming of Jesus Christ or by death or whatever, these things are now part of our life. So now that it is, does God have a greater purpose at times in illness and in death to where he goes ahead regardless of the prayers for healing he has a higher purpose we don't understand and so it ends up happening anyways even though we prayed and had faith i think that's really important because i really don't have all the answers to these questions and there are things i've wondered myself many times when i've seen people that just didn't get healed or innocent children that die and just various things throughout my life or times I don't get healed. I've suffered with weird allergies for, I don't know, like years and years to where I get facial swelling, um, acne. I feel bad, all sorts of crazy stuff. I've been to numerous doctors. I've been to allergy doctors. I've repented. I've prayed. I've fasted. I've changed my diet. I lived on Benadryl for years. So... You know, I don't know the answer to that. Well, for those of you who want to leave a comment, I'm not living on Benadryl now. I did this in the past for years. Ibuprofen, Benadryl, never got any answers to why I have these allergies. And then I've read book after book after book about stuff and did what the book said, Christian books on healing and on why you have allergies. So this is something I've lived with for years and it's miserating. And honestly, I guess that could be one of the big reasons I don't like to get on camera. My face swells up, I get pimples, uh, my lip right here swells a lot in my face here and it looks like I'm smirking or I look like Rocky Balboa or something and it's really irritating and I don't like it and I get headaches and all sorts of stuff. Again, this has been for many years. And I, too, have gotten frustrated thinking, why won't the Lord heal me? What have I done? Have I done something? Lord, show me what I've done wrong. And have cried and cried. There's times I felt like I was dying and just felt so miserable. And I would ask him. So this is something I would think about. Lord, if healing is for everybody, why can't I be healed? If healing is for everybody, why didn't that little three-year-old with the brain tumor get healed? If healing is for everybody... Why didn't that seven-year-old with the brain tumor get healed? If healing is for everybody, why this? Why that? Why is my grandma gone? I mean, I would ask myself these questions. Could it be that there's just some things that here on this earth, we just have to have faith regardless, and we may never understand? When the healing doesn't come, then we just have to trust God that it was part of his plan. Is having faith getting that healing or is having faith when you or someone you're praying for doesn't get that healing that you trust God that he must have some plan that is way higher than we can ever begin to imagine it's got to be something you know the Bible says specifically that God's ways and our ways are nothing at all alike we're never going to understand the mind of God or why he does things. Maybe someday we will when we're in heaven. But for right now here in this flesh, 
we suffer. There's many people who believe that, oh, Christians aren't supposed to suffer ever. We're supposed to just have life perfect, and that's not true. What is it, that NAR, New Apostolic Reformation, Dominionism movement, that they believe in all this stuff. Whatever you want, ask for it, have faith, God will give it to you. Um, doesn't matter what it is. You need money, have faith, God will give it to you. Well, sometimes he does. That is true, but not all the time. It depends on what God wants. It's not always what we want. It's not always what we perceive to be the best decision. It's not always what we understand. It's not always about how we feel. We feel one way, but God feels a different way, and God knows our future, and he knows the future of everyone affected by whatever it is that you're asking for, whether or not he gives it to you or does what you're praying for. There's something in the future that what you're praying for is going to affect and whether or not God gives you that thing or honors your request depends on his plan for the future, not just necessarily for your life, but for someone's life who may not even be in your life right now or in the people's lives you're praying for, but may come along and whatever it is may have some effect on them. I know that may not make sense, but just think about it. Everything has a cause and effect that happens, okay? How to explain. I'm trying to think of how to explain. We get in these deep conversations, and I know what they mean, but it's hard to explain. Okay, you live in a house, and you decide to plant flowers and all sorts of plants and do some landscaping. You don't own the house, or maybe you do. But you live in this house, and you do all these things to the house. You decide that you're also going to put a patio outside of your basement door that goes to the outside of your house because it looks nice and you live in this house for a while but someday you move out or you pass away or you sell your house or whatever and someone else moves in so all these changes you made to the house are now affecting these people that don't even know you and for many generations out, everybody that lives in that house is going to be affected by something that you did to the house. So that patio you thought would be really nice that you put outside of your basement because you have a basement door that goes to the outside. However it was laid or done, this particular patio has now caused a problem and the basement to that house leaks and floods out. So now two or three people later that now live in that house are dealing with a flooding basement and they're having to pay a ton of money out to try to fix this leak that was caused by a patio that looked nice and felt great and seemed like a great decision at the time for your house. But other people you don't even know have been greatly affected in their lives by something that you did. Does that make sense now, or the way I have explained it? I don't know if that's a good example or a bad example. I don't know. It makes sense to me, but I'm trying to make sense to you. So. so what I'm saying is we just don't know what God's plan is. So back to my allergy problems, I will say this. Before I had these problems, I was overconfident I was out running around, sleeping around with different people. I would go party, go to dance clubs and dance half naked and just do all sorts of bad things that you're not supposed to do. I would go out drinking and I was just living a really, really sinful lifestyle. I mean, I suppose there's people that, that live worse, but I was living a pretty sinful lifestyle. So when I got these allergies and it affected my appearance and affected how I felt about myself, I stopped doing those things slowly but surely because I didn't feel as pretty and I didn't feel as confident. So all these little things that happened as a result caused me to not feel good about myself. Now am I saying God wants me to not feel good about myself? No. 
it's a sin to not feel good about yourself. However, sometimes God can take our sin and turn it around for good. So these things that happened to me humbled me and caused me to stop living the perverse lifestyle that I was living. Remember Paul said he had a thorn in the flesh or a thorn in his side or something like that. I don't have it in front of me, which the Lord would not remove. We, nobody really knows for sure what that was. But whatever this thing was kept Paul humble and kept him in line. So what I'm saying is this thorn in my flesh, maybe to this day, it keeps me humble and in line. If I think with my mind, okay, well, Lord, if this was gone from me, I promise you, I have no desire to live that way again. And truly, I don't. I really don't. I have no desire whatsoever to go back to that kind of a lifestyle that has been many years ago. But I don't know the future. Who's to say? You know, I am a human being. That obviously was some sort of a shortcoming for me. Who is to say that if God totally delivered me from that, that I wouldn't slowly but surely be tempted back into some sort of a lifestyle like that? I don't really know. I can sit here and tell you I honestly don't think so, but I'm not God and I don't know what the future brings. So I guess ultimately what I want to say is that if some suffering or loss or heartache or sorrow or illness or whatever it is in your life, okay, now really listen to me and hear me out on this, saves the eternal person from going to hell for all of eternity, then to God, no matter how much he hated to see you suffer, no matter how much he shed tears right along with you, it was worth it in the end. Because had you not had that suffering that you went through in your life, how do you know that maybe you would have wound up in hell or somebody else would have wound up in hell? So, this life, we have to remember, is temporary. This is not forever. It reminds me of that song, All We Are is Dust in the Wind. God made us from the dust of the earth. And that is truly all this life is, is just a vapor. This isn't the real deal. This life is building and creating and establishing what our eternal life is going to be. In other words, where we're going to spend eternity. I've been losing my voice today a little bit, so bear with me. But this life here is going to decide where you spend eternity, in heaven with the Lord or in hell. God did not make hell for human beings. He made hell for Satan and the demons. However, when Adam and Eve sinned, well, you know what happened then. It is not God's desire that anybody should go to hell at all, ever. That is not his desire. He's not up there with a whip and a bolt of lightning shooting from his finger, just wanting to send people to hell. That's not what he does. In fact, God doesn't send people to hell. Guess who does? We make the decision to spend eternity in hell. We send ourselves to hell when we choose to follow the footsteps and the lies of the enemy and we shut God out and we reject Jesus Christ. That is a decision we make. I'm tired of hearing people say that God sends people to hell. Why does God toss people in hell? God doesn't send people to hell. We send ourselves there through rejection, unbelief, and all that nonsense that we do here on this earth. But once it's done, it's too late. There will never be going back and doing it over again. In fact, I personally believe, I don't have proof of this. This is just my own personal thing. Now, hear me out. I think that when we die, everything is there in our spiritual mind. And we suddenly know that there is a God and we know that we have messed up and we know that we have rejected Jesus Christ and we know that we are gonna go to hell. 
I really think that. I mean, I don't know. I could be wrong. I just think somehow at the moment we die, that all of a sudden we realize that God is real. So let's say I was an atheist or an evolutionist or whatever, and I died. I would suddenly, at the moment I die, have this powerful realization that I had been wrong and God was indeed real and Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, but now it's too late. And now I'm scurrying around. What do I do? What do I do? But it's too late. I can't do anything. I've rejected Jesus. I've died. It's too late. There's all sorts of things that I sometimes think about. I'm a deep thinker. I get into deep thoughts and just think about things. Sometimes I overthink things too. And that can be a downfall for me. But I'm just trying to say, overall, that so many of us think we can just know the mind of God. So many of us think we know his plan. There have been so many sufferings in this world for many, many years. Like since way back when, going back to Bible times, that some good came out of and saved the soul of someone or of a bunch of people. Hundreds, thousands, millions of people because of one person's suffering, one person's death, or maybe a big death. I don't know. I can see God in that totally. I know we don't like to think, well, God doesn't allow us to suffer. That's just not right. God allowed Jesus to suffer on the cross because a higher purpose came out of it. If God had that mentality, Jesus wouldn't have died on the cross. He would have yanked him right off and said, I can't take this anymore. But God allowed Jesus Christ, who was totally innocent and sinless, to be tormented, beaten, spit upon, whipped. Uh, his back looked like a bloody raw steak and everything else and to greatly suffer because he had a higher purpose. So think of that. When we go through suffering, God has a higher purpose. Always pray in faith, always believe, always hope for the best. But when you don't get what you've prayed for or what you truly believed in, that's when you have to still trust the Lord. You have to throw your arms up into the air and say, you must have a higher purpose that I don't understand. Some of you out there might scoff at what I've said, or you might make fun of me or put me down because there are people who do. But you know what? I don't have to share all my personal business with all of you. But I've gone through tremendous suffering over the last few years. If I sat here and shared every detail Many of you would probably cry. You'd probably freak out and think, how have you been putting these videos out this whole time while you went through that? You would shake your head in disbelief. You know why? Because I took the pain that the enemy laid on me through these things I have gone through, and I used it to help other people. Now, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of times where I just couldn't record. I couldn't bring myself to get off my couch. There's times where for days where I didn't upload a video because for days from, I don't know, morning till night and all night long, other than getting up to take a shower and to use the toilet and maybe, I don't know, hardly barely eat. All I did was lay on the couch. I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything but cry. But when I did make it up off that couch to do a recording, I would take the pain of what I was going through and the deep emotional torment, and it's all been very recent. I still have stuff going on, but I would use it to try to help other people because people can connect with you. They can sense that. People pick up on the spirit that is upon you in your video, and they can tell if you're genuine or sincere and when you're hurting, you can more easily reach people who are hurting because you connect with them. So I know, I know what I'm talking about. 
I know about being sick. I know about going through things. I know about trials and tribulations and going through the fires of hell here on this earth. And I know all about it. I've been there. I'm sure there's some of you out there who have been through even worse. I I'm sure of it, positive. But I can tell you this, I will never stop loving my God and I will never doubt him. It's not going to happen. No matter what the devil does to me or what his plan is, I know that God is God. And I know that I know that I know that he has a plan. And I trust that. I will never turn my back on God. I will never not believe in him anymore just because of my suffering. I will never say there is no God. I will never say God is fake or what's wrong with him. Never. There are times, like any other human, I cry out, what have I done? Where are you? And I've told you all this before in videos. I really do. I'm like, where are you, Lord? Have you forgotten me? Do you hear me? Are your earplugs in today, Lord? When it comes to my voice, where are you? There's many times I've done that. And I'm sure there's many times you've done that too. I just trust that he's there. I don't, I don't see the wind. You know, I can see out the window right now. Y'all can probably see the reflection in my glasses of outside, the, the leaves blowing. I don't see the wind. I can't see the wind at all. Can you? We don't see the wind. But we know the wind is there because we see everything that the wind touches. We see the leaves blow. We see trees fall over. We know sometimes the wind is strong and sometimes it's just a gentle breeze. But we don't see it, but we know it's there. Positively, if you asked anybody on this earth, do you believe in the wind? They would say yes. You would say how? How do you know the wind exists? Have you seen it? They would say, well, no, but I see things blowing, right? Right. So we don't see God with our fleshly eyes, but we see everything that the Lord touches. And there's so much more, but that's just one of the reasons that we know and we can say that God really exists. We would look foolish to say the wind doesn't exist, wouldn't we? Would we not look silly if I went up to the store right now and I just announced the wind doesn't exist? And when everybody looked at me with their mouths open, like, what is wrong with her? I would say, well, I've never seen it. How do you know it exists? I know it exists because just like you, I can look out my window right now and see everything that the wind touches. And in the same, you can see everything that God touches. So no matter what you're going through, how bad it hurts, whether or not you or somebody else did or didn't receive healing, just know that God is there. He has a higher purpose, a reason. There is something that you just may never understand. And I guess what you have to do is you have to just accept within yourself that you're not going to understand only if God allows you to, but you may not understand. 
You just have to trust that God is God and you are you and the situation is what it is. That being said, I know I've given you guys all a bunch of food for thought. I do want to share a Facebook post. It's kind of short. The Lord gave it to me as I wrote it and it just kept coming out from me and it blessed a bunch of people. It has to do with salt and tears and it seems to go with this video in a sense. But I promised a few people I would share it, so I'm going to go ahead and share that with you now. And just listen, it's really going to bless you. I'll be right back in just a moment. I went ahead and printed this up, and I'm going to share it with you now. And this is something incredible because as I was writing it, the Lord was just pouring this out from my heart. Sometimes it seems so hard to cast our cares upon the Lord because we want immediate relief from the sadness and the pain. We don't know how to let go and truly give it to God because of the hurts, the thoughts, the memories, because of feelings and deep emotions that will not let up. Sometimes we desire to fix it or go back in time and do things differently. There are many reasons why it can be difficult to let go and give it over to God. But let me say this, salt is a natural cleanser, purifier, and it also preserves. Salt helps cleanse and get rid of infection. Salt also burns when poured on a wound, but that's because it's pulling out the infection. You ever remember the saying, pouring salt on an open wound? Telling the truth to people caught up in sin can be a painful experience for them. It stings, it burns, it draws out the infection and corruption, but hidden infections get worse and can eventually kill and destroy. Though it stings, burns, and brings discomfort, it heals just like salt. We are the salt of the earth. We are the truth tellers. Doesn't truth sometimes bring tears? And don't the tears bring relief and healing? Our tears are loaded with salt. Have you ever had your tears trickle down your face to your lips and taste the salt? God has given us our tears to wash away the pain and the toxic infection. Furthermore, as I said, we are the salt of the earth. We suffer here on this earth in these bodies of flesh we hurt, we ache, and we grieve. We are the salted tears of God on this earth, here to cleanse and purify the world of sin by leading people to Jesus Christ. We, like Christ, bear the burdens of the flesh and bear the cross as Christians. But how can we even begin to help bring cleansing and healing to others if we have not suffered ourselves, we can't. That's why we too have suffered, will suffer again, and shed many tears. Have you ever thought of your pain this way? You're just feeling God's pain. You're bearing your cross. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. You are the tears of God. The tears bring cleansing, healing, and joy. And without them, there would be no cleansing, no healing, and no true joy. For how would we know true joy had we not known sorrow first? How would we know we needed God if we never suffered? That was written 7 26 of 2019, so July 26. It was the middle of the night, so it was still kind of like my July 25th because I hadn't been asleep yet, but it was actually on the 26th. That's when the Lord gave that to me. And so as I began to write, I just listened to the voice of the Lord and it just flowed out of me. And I know that something like that could only have come 
from him, not from lonely yaws, but from the Holy Spirit. Well, I hope that blessed you. It's just, God is such an amazing God. We don't always understand him. He understands us somehow. I don't know how. We don't even understand ourselves sometimes, do we? But God always understands us. Each and every day, each and every moment, he sees you, he hears you, he feels you, he loves you, and he is there. Thank you for joining me for coffee time today. It's always a blessing to spend some time with you guys just talking about whatever. Thank you for that. And as always, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to me here, but also go to my website, freedomnationnews.com and click on any article over in the right-hand column. After you click on the article, you will see the subscription form. You just put your email in and subscribe. That way, if YouTube hinders you from getting my updates here on my YouTube channel, You'll get my updates from my website. Some of you have commented that you haven't been getting my updates from my website. That's because Lindley Oz hasn't posted on the website. That's right. You guys can all throw rotten tomatoes at me. I am so behind on that, and I apologize. I keep promising that I'm going to get to it in the last video or two. I promise you I am going to get to that this week. I swear to you. I promise. Give you my word. I am really behind, so I apologize sincerely to you guys for that. I'm going to try to be better about it and post more regular so that you guys will get my updates. So be sure and go and subscribe even though I'm behind. I got myself behind when I left to go out of town, and now I need to catch back up. Also, and I mentioned this at the start of the video, if you feel moved to give a gift to this ministry, I am almost 100% viewer supported. I do rely on your financial help in order to continue doing these videos and reaching people all over the world with the truth. Please don't feel guilty if you're not able to do so or if the Lord isn't telling you to. Just do what you can do and know that in order to do this, that I do rely on your guys' support. and. Those of you who are giving, I just want to give you a special thank you. I really, really, really genuinely appreciate it. I couldn't do this without you. The financial gifts to this ministry have been down. So anybody out there who can hear this message, your help would be greatly appreciated if you feel led to do that. Also, be sure and like this video and share it all over the place. I'm being hindered from... I don't know, from people getting my updates, as I just mentioned, my videos aren't getting advertised, but you can help spread the truth by sharing the videos all over the place as much as you can. Thank you so much. God bless you, and I look forward to doing coffee time with you again. Be blessed abundantly, and don't forget, if you have any questions about a check that you've sent or anything, please do not cancel it. Just send me an email, lindleyaz at freedomnationnews.com. That is also in my video description below this video. Send me an email and ask if you had something happen and you don't want me to cash the check and I haven't cashed it yet, send me an email and I'll destroy it and I'll send you proof that it's destroyed. I am very faithful about that. I will not cash someone's check if they ask me not to. Keep your eyes on the Lord because He's keeping His eyes on you. He loves you very much.